What's going on guys, it is Shay here, it's everybody, welcome back to another prop review. Today guys, I'm going to be reviewing something that I made on my own, like usual, although usually I make other weapons from like other toys or something, but today I actually made something from scratch. Today guys, I am going to be showing you guys my own West Star 35 blaster pistol from Star Wars. The West Star 35 blaster pistol is a blaster pistol mainly used by the people from Death Watch and the Clone Wars and also mainly used by almost every single Mandalorian who uses a blaster. Like Mandalorian police officers use this gun, um, many other people like Sabine Wren, some of the most famous Mandalorians, Sabine Wren, Gar Saxon, Fen Rao, the Mandalorians, um, who else we have, Pre Vizsla, um, Bo-Katan, Many other people use the West R35, and from what I know, no West R35 that I know of, like, doesn't shoot green Tabana gas, like, shoots, fires green bolts. Every other West R35 that I've ever seen in my entire life of, of watching Star Wars, I've only ever seen them fire out either red, blue, or yellow bolts. I've never seen them fire out green bolts, which kind of sucks. Maybe it's because, like, green bolts are maybe... A much much more a little bit more expensive than yellow gas is part of the reason why they like because hot because yellow gas is a higher quality gas anyways so the West Star 35 was made by the Concordia Crescent Technologies aka the CCT for short that's just what I call it um, and it was mostly manufactured it was manufactured mainly just because of like weapons that like you know just has a very like a very streamlined design of a blaster and it has a pretty practical design to this thing, and <laughs> you can even hear some of, hang on, let me, let me see if you guys can hear this. Can you guys hear that? Like, it has a little bit of cracking to it, but that's because the cardboard, I didn't use super glue for this, or hot glue. I used strictly just tape for this part, so, or for this entire thing. So, as you can see here, this thing is pretty well made in my opinion because maybe it's because that I was kind of anxious to do this for a while. I've actually wanted to make the Blorg 1120 holdout blaster, which I actually, do, I actually still do have the out, the print, like the cutout I have for, which is right here. Um, I'm pretty sure this thing would look sick if I, like, did cut it out and make it, but <clears throat> all the other attempts I did with that did not work. So. I end up just doing this. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys are probably wondering, like, but Shay, why did you only just do one of these West Star 35s? Because for those who wonder what I'm talking about, and any Star Wars fans who who know who has the knowledge of blasters, knows that the West Star 35 is mostly dual wielded. Just like the DC-17 hand blasters are mostly dual wielded by clones, the West Star 35s are mostly dual wielded by Mandalorians. I think except for the Mandalorian police officers are the only people who don't dual wield this thing. Um, but as you can see here, I made a cutout for this thing just so I can get it right. And I really thought it was going to take me a lot longer to make. But as you can see here, here's the cutout, and here is the final result. And if I put the cutout right here on the, uh, like, on the front of the blaster, you can tell that I've actually cut down, like, cut down a different, of, like, a few things up here. Like, the pistol grip used to be, was supposed to be this long. You can see on the other side. <sighs> like that. Um, the barrel was supposed to be a little bit longer, I had to cut that down so I could put the tape around the barrel, so that way you guys don't see, see all that freaking cardboard. So yeah, this thing, it, I really do think this thing is like a full sized one one like one one scale or one to one scale blaster prop. Unlike other blasters I've made back in the past, I think except for the SC-14C, the technically recent version, because it was like last year, um, where I made that SC-14C, the papercraft variant. Um, I think out of all of those, this is probably the, one of the most accurate blaster pistols or blasters in general that I've ever made full, like full size, like not just cardboard cutouts, like actual, like mixing, like using different layers of cardboard, not layers of cardboard, but like using just multiple layers of cardboard, slapping it on there, probably taping it and using glue if I did have that, but I didn't have that, but yeah, I mean like, 
probably the most accurate out of all of them. And the most, and the probably as I thought the most accurate uh, gun I've ever made or weapon I've ever made was the P2020, um, which to be honest, they kind of look similar. It's just that the P2020's barrel is obviously shorter. If I had a one-one scale prop of this, like 3D printed or something, I'm pretty sure I could have actually like put them together. Um, but yeah, anyways, now I'm gonna go into the details of this thing, which is not really meant that much because I have not finished this thing yet. So as you can see here, you have your barrel, which obviously fires the uh, blaster bolts from it. You have your trigger guard, which has no trigger, because um, as I said, usually, although the uh, the um, the West R35 has a, a flat trigger and a, excuse me, a pressure sensitive trigger, um, it's like, you know, it still wouldn't really work to me. Um, the West R35 has no, like, it has iron size, I think, but it does not use a scope like other blaster pistols do. It doesn't use even a dot sight, um, but I'm pretty sure not even any blaster pistol has. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, like, it's a very streamlined and practical blaster. It's very cool. And I'm pretty sure these things are actually kind of cheap, to be honest. Like, especially the ones that only fire red bolts because, you know, red, red Sabani gas is the cheapest option for a blaster. I, I'm pretty sure these things are kind of cheap, but the, probably the most expensive one you could probably get was some, like, probably the ones, if ever existed, were probably the green variant, the, like ones that fire green blaster bolts. But probably the most expensive would probably have to be the yellow one, since yellow Tabani gas is a higher quality gas. So, yeah, the West Star 35, one of my favorite blaster pistols. Um, I actually made a DC-17 hand blaster before, and it was so-so, you know. Because um, after that, I ended up modifying it into my first P2020 that I've ever made, which had a removable magazine. Excuse me. <laughs> Hang on a second which had a removable magazine, whereas this one does not have a removable magazine. But it's a lot more show, like a lot more like game accurate where, well, minus the trigger, like no, like the lack of a trigger guard and trigger. Um, but without like, besides that, this thing is much more accurate than my first one. But as I said, it didn't have, it had a, had a removable magazine. Um, you know, just take it out and re put it right back in there. But as I said, this thing is a lot more accurate. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I do remember, I think, I uh, tried making a West R35 back in the day, or not like back in the day, but like kind of recent in a way, because I cut down my wingman prop I made out of cardboard, which was kind of a bust, because this thing would have taken a lot to make this thing, and like as you see here. So, yeah, I mean, like, this thing is not like, st making stuff like this is not easy. And any person who makes props knows this, like, anybody, like, like, from anything, like, cardboard, like, you know, from cardboard, resin, 3D printing, um, you know, and stuff like that, anybody knows, like, for anybody who makes props, they know that it does not, it, the, the process of making these things is, are not easy, like, especially if you get, like, a detail, like, just one little bitty detail wrong for, like, any hardcore, like, prop makers, if they get just, like, one little bitty detail wrong, they have to immediately start over in a whole thing, which I can kind of, like, I, I know where they're coming from because I actually had to do that before, because for my Blurg 1120, which is right here, I was actually supposed to make this along with this too, but uh, this ended up being a failed attempt because the cardboard cutout that I made looked, looked nothing like this because I'm not good at tracing. So, yeah, as you can see there, um, once because the, there was the pistol grip that was giving me the most trouble and I tried two attempts and it didn't work out so I just stopped I might actually end up throwing this away probably might actually end up keeping it and actually trying again so yeah like I ended up making this so like detail wise there's not really much to talk about because I am not really done with this thing yet because I have I have to uh, put like draw like the vent like the little vent holes up here to vent out extra gas when fired um, and I, you know, probably might actually end up giving it a custom paint job, maybe, but it might stay like this, I'm not sure. But anyways, yeah, so now we're going to compare this thing to two of my, to two of the guns that I actually have here right now, the P2020, obviously, that you guys just saw, and my 1911. So, here's the 1911 beside the, uh, what's our 35, the 1911's barrel is shorter, as you can see there, um, from the back that looks like 
and the P2020. Now, the P2020 and the Westar 35 actually look very similar to each other. It's just like, well, in well for the pistol grip, they look very similar. It's just it's just that the P2020's pistol grip is longer because of the magazine, um, and obviously the Westar 35's barrel is longer. Here it is from the side. So, yeah, and if I wanted to, I could dual wield these two guns, our blaster and firearm. But like I could literally dual wield these things if I really wanted to. So, yeah, but unless it has hammer point, ah, uh, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, so this thing, you know, it took me a while to do it. It took me about two and a half hours to fin it to make this. Like this, you know, since it's just carbon, but like if I try to 3D print, like try to 3D print this, this thing would have took it taken a lot longer to make. Um, like probably a day or maybe a week, maybe it depends on how long it takes for 3D printing to finish or for the process to finish on a 3D printer. So yeah, that is basically all about the Westar 35 blaster pistol. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, you guys may have heard in the video on my like to my voice. I am currently I currently have the common cold at the moment because it was raining back in Tennessee when we were on vacation and I was walking in it and that's how this happened and I got all this cold air on me. So uh yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh prop review and I may I'll make sure to come back with another one next Wednesday I'll have a comment of the day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.